let's talk about instrument panel demo. So let me throw this in. We're going to start with a real simple plane, and I want to show you what's the problem with using masks to create shapes. That's really the fundamental problem that we're going to look at here. And then we're going to continue with the panel loops to just kind of get the rest of our model. So the main topic here is, what's the fundamental problem with creating masks, uh, using masks to create polygroups the way I've done it here? So while I get set up, anybody want to take a gander? What is the problem from your view of using masks to create um, uh, hard surfaces? There's blur, aliasing, yeah, those are problems. Mask count on resolution, so it's alpha dependent, you know, do you have enough geometry in there? Um, what's going to be the edge flow based on the resolution of your model and your alpha? And, uh, and not as much control. I would actually go the other direction, Jeff, and I would say there's not enough randomness. One of the fundamental problems I see with, um, with masking is that if I come in here to create an instrument panel, I got, like, I got five minutes to create an instrument panel, I'm going to come in and say, all right, I can mask this off, and I will use this edge looped masked border. So control shift E is what I'm going to press right now. Control Shift E. That's fine. Okay, now I need to just come in here and uh, Control Shift E, and then clear that. and And now I want to get a little bit here. Control Shift E, and um, or come here. Poly group group masked. Okay, come in here. Poly group group masked. Okay, group masked. We need something that's going to give us a lot more, uh, a lot of very fast, very easy to replicate uh, randomness. And so in the first time when I was using group, I, I was getting pretty good with randomness. This edge loop mask border was pretty solid. You know, this worked really well. It created one group and then it broke that group up into separate pieces created one group here and then it broke that group up into separate pieces. So that's great. But then when I switched to, um, to polygroups and I used group masked, well, I, you know, everything got kind of boring after that. It's just these large shapes. So I had to know exactly what I was doing. So what I'm going to recommend, I'm going to just undo all of this. Instead of going through the process of masking things out like I did or using edge loop mask border, what you should be doing is using one of your control shift buttons or brushes. So I'm going to press control shift, open it up, and I'm going to select slice rectangle. Yeah. So with slice rectangle, I'm going to be able to come in, I press control shift, drag that out. Now I'm getting some nice randomness really quick. Let's move this right into the center. Put that there. I don't need just the select rectangle. I can also use the select circle, or the slice circle, sorry. Try to put a little bit of something in there. Okay. Then I can also use the slice curve. It's a little bit more dangerous. Okay. Let me show you how quickly how to use that. Control shift, click, and then if you really want to be functional, you just keep the mouse down, but you lift your fingers. So I press Control Shift and I click to initiate slice curve. I lift my fingers, my hands around gesturing right now. If you keep your hand 
pressed on control shift, um, your hand will hate you. And when we get a little bit more complicated with things like pressing control one more time, see how I did that? I'm going to press control again. I'm just tapping control now. They added this neat function where when you're in, you could accidentally get into slice curve. Sorry, let me rephrase it this way. When you're using slice curve, you may want to switch to select rectangle. Say like, well, I don't want to do this curve. I just want to, you know, focus on this part and then I might curve, you know, that. So they added this feature that allows you to do that um, within the brush itself. Control shift, click and drag. And then you see, I'm old school. I have the habit right now that control shift is pressed and my pinky hurts. My, it just hurts keeping that pressed. But what they want you to do is press control shift, click, and then lift your hand. Wiggle your fingers, just let that go. And then if you need to, you press control and you're like, oh, that was a mistake. Now I'm going to press alt and boom, boom, boom. I don't know what that's going to do. Maybe something interesting, maybe something not. But anyways, I have a ton of randomness now. So for me, masking has that central problem of if you mask something out, it, you're more deliberate. You have to create a mask that has the shape you want. You have to have a, a whole library of masks. I remember watching uh, Vit Vitaly Bulgarov do a, um, a demo at SIGGRAPH, and he had the most beautiful alphas. They were just an um, just amazing. Um, so you you can have that library, but at a certain point, that's kind of gets in the way of your flow. Not the not the ultimate way, but when you're breaking up large forms, using alphas uh, requires you to either do the work in advance and have a whole bunch of awesome alphas, or do something like this and hope for a happy accident. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, once we're here, we have this kind of randomly created. If you were to just come in and do a quick panel loop, 0 0.05, nothing special, bada bing. You know, we have an interesting panel here. Some interesting forms cut up. And this is going to be one of the things that I want you to do is make sure that you create random instrument panel for homework for uh, your work. Just get really comfortable doing something really, just go as random as you can. 